What's up, you guys? James Strickland here. Welcome to another In the Rack with Swim Hack. So this week, really, really good week, getting exciting. Uh, told you last week I got a meet kind of planning uh, for December, and so I think that is really hopping. I think training is leading up to that. As long as we can keep things together and kind of peak correctly, we are going to make this thing happen. Uh, so, you know, I've got two weeks here kind of combined. Well, I guess it's not really two weeks. It's more of a week and a half. What I ended up doing, so after the last recap, I had a nice bench day, and I'll show you guys here in a second. Uh, and then I got with my coach and said, you know, I think we're ready to go. This feels good. And uh, got my training for the following week. And I got a little ahead of myself. I got excited. I saw what it needs to be. And I said, you know what? Friday's coming. I got the training on Thursday. And on Friday, I actually did my day one uh, for what was supposed to be the following week. That way, I'd go ahead and knock it out send my training in and get it a following week uh, kind of ahead of schedule i normally do not recommend that to you guys who are lifting uh, on a progressive overload state but i know myself i know where i'm at in my training i know how i'm feeling and i'm just trying to get the feel of the weight back if you guys have been following me for a while you know how things uh, things are looking uh, you know that my weight is typically a little bit higher uh, when i'm getting ready for a meet than it is right now so i'm just trying to play it smart but i've been take i've taken a couple months off coming back and I feel like uh, I need to kind of just bump the weight up a little bit heavier each week uh, in a little bit more uh, more of a uh, sped up fashion, if you will, but not too fast because once we get up into the 600s, man, it is almost meet time and we're still kind of down in the low 500s, mid 500s. And so I think we're staying smart with this, but uh, just to kind of give you a little small recap before I jump into the actual videos. Uh, so I basically took uh, day one day two and day three and day four if you will kind of all on one week and then the following week which was actually this week which was today literally which i won't see unless you're following me on instagram so go over there uh at swim hack uh but uh you'll see kind of what i did today and kind of the recap for that for next week but so i'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here but uh you know what let's just go ahead and i'll jump right into the video uh because i i really got the voiceovers and, and cool stuff for you i really want to share this with you guys so let's check it out all right, so week one, day one here. We got 407 on the bar. Got legs up just to kind of work on balance, just to kind of get a little different feel. This is pretty light uh, relative to what I can do. Uh, it does feel heavy uh, just because I haven't been super, super heavy in a while. So it's, it's kind of playing tricks on me, but uh, that was first set. Second set, moving on, I've got 473, uh, set called for a triple. So working on just getting a little bit better pauses. There we go. Solid, and now I'm gonna get uh, 501 here, and this is for a double. Solid. And I want you to notice my foot position here. Just notice that right here, and later on in the video I'll show you. So day two on week one here, um, Got 501, and this is a double overhand, no belt PR. <laughs> uh, just working on grip strength. I'm trying to limit myself from going too super heavy on deadlifts so that I can maintain uh, some energy for the, the week uh, going into um, uh, my bench only cycle here. Uh, I am doing squats. This particular day, I think I worked up to like 405 for about a set of five, no belt, um, and just kind of keeping things. Pretty excited there about the deadlift PR. Uh, that's uh, pretty hard to do. This is going to be uh, a side view, rear view of that same set here. Uh, I'm doing this so I can see my positioning. Uh, I have a tendency to straighten my legs up because I'm so upper body dominant. Uh, so I, I definitely want to make sure that I'm not uh, stiff legging it and Roman, Romanian deadlifting this. Uh, but I have a tendency to straight leg just a little bit more than most, uh, but uh, nothing too hard on the back. Uh, you can see I'm obviously this is another angle to show that I'm not... Um, doing any type of uh, hook grip here. So it literally is just ripping the fingers up, but uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, this is gonna be my day three. This was done on Friday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday is kind of my split right now. Uh, this is uh, 518 and this is for a double. Uh, I was actually supposed to do this the following week and you guys have followed me for a while know that I typically don't do two benches heavier than 500 in a week. See, that's a little bit slow there. I want you to notice the speed of that uh, on the, later in the video. So this is overhead press the same day, 225 for a set of five. Uh, haven't done a lot of overhead press lately, so it just seems really heavy, even though it's moving pretty well. It's, the CNS is just not fired up yet. 
uh, but uh, pretty, pretty happy with this. I'm gonna wanna go a little bit heavier here early in the cycle just to keep the shoulders in it. Uh, this is my uh, fly set. I worked actually up to this. Uh, I didn't just jump right into 95 pound dumbbells uh, for a set of eight here. But uh, notice that anything that I do, uh, typically if, it's, if I'm showing you the video, I have done a considerable amount of warm up before it, especially on bench. Flies, I normally start with like 40s, go to 50s, maybe 60s, 70s, and then up. Uh, I don't see flies being too crazy this particular training cycle. Uh, when I was up at the 160 or 150s, uh, for flies, I noticed that my pecs were extremely strong, but when I went into a bench uh, meet, my pecs seemed to get strained. So I, I'm going to be cautious about that this training cycle. All right, so this is my uh, second week. This is actually this, uh, the, this past week, um, and this was just a few days after. So this was uh, the last day last week was on Friday. This is Monday. Uh, actually, I believe this may have been, uh, this is actually, this is Monday of the next week. I've got my daughter here, beautiful 12-year-old daughter in uh, the spot position here, helping me out. Got a set, uh, oh, this is actually just a one, uh, just, <laughs> just messing with her here. She was not impressed with that rep, so I went ahead and I got two more sets of six. So I'm going to show you all both of these sets. So I'm going to go ahead and try to impress my 12-year-old my here. So note to the boys out there who are uh, trying to impress my daughter, unless your bench is at least five, 600, I don't think she's really gonna be impressed. She wasn't impressed with mine. Uh, and anytime I tell her you know, what I did for the day on the 600 plus days, she's not real impressed. So, <laughs> but uh, this is fun. And she's actually been in, if you guys have questions about this, she has definitely been on this bench before. Uh, and she's uh, about a 45 pound bench or so. I haven't really pushed the limits on that, uh, but I think we're pretty good. She still didn't like that set, so. All right, so here she's not even gonna spot me out. This is the last set, top view. She's just uh, gonna eat her snack back there. She's not even looking at me anymore, so she's wondering what time it is. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's what I get. So, all right, so day two, got my squats and deadlifts. This is a uh, 485 warm up. Notice um, we've got sleeves on here just to keep the knees warm uh, and no belt, working just uh, obviously to limit myself also on squat and to work on core strength. Uh, I don't wanna you know, do super, super heavy on squat and deadlift and, and limit my, my energy level output for bench. Uh, this is a 507 squat, still got the sleeves on notice because uh, I'm going to do the last one without sleeves. Uh, and I like to keep the sleeves on to stay warm, keep my joints healthy. You'll notice um, that, yeah, I can definitely do anything that I do without sleeves, without um, you know wraps and things like that, but it's a safety precaution. It's definitely there to keep uh, the joints healthy most, most of all. Uh, so if you guys are wondering, you know, if I get any help out of my sleeves, the, the help is not with moving the weight. The help is keeping my joints healthy. Uh, and when I'm getting tendonitis later on in the season, uh, not training with sleeves uh, for most of my sets uh, is definitely going to be the cause of that. But I like to do occasional uh, naked knee, no belt squat just to see kind of where I'm at. This is a nice uh, deep squat here uh, with um, 551 on the bar. Uh, so pretty happy with that. It definitely feels heavier than it really should be. Uh, but again, I haven't been that heavy in a while. This is uh, 501 here for a little warm up, and I was con contemplating going super, super heavy, but uh, this is 523 for a double. Uh, obviously, no belt and no straps here. This is double overhand. And so, uh, gonna have a little uh, wild hair here in my training and see if I can't pull a PR of 616. A couple attempts here. This is all over just a few minutes period of time, and I actually got it up pretty good there. I think I could have locked it out. Uh, had I just kept driving. Uh, so I kept a couple more minutes here, just kind of contemplating life and wondering why this feels so hard. Obviously, putting straps on, I could slam this any day of the week. Uh, but, uh, you know, trying to keep myself limited a little bit, keep the core engaged, no belt, no straps. I'm going to go for last attempt here. And um, I think I'm pretty much spent at this point because my grip is just not going to hold on. So done with uh, those. Moving on to T-bar row. Uh, this is 308 pounds for a set of five. Shout out to Fitness Destination in Houston. This is where I got some of these bar accessories. Uh, so I'll put a link down in the description to their Instagram page and you guys check them out. This is a 340 pound uh, five, top, top set of five here. 
uh, definitely felt that. And this is uh, day three, last day of the week, Friday. 240 pounds for a set of five on overhead press. Feels uh, about the same as the 225 did last week. Uh, so definitely stepping it up, progressive overload and feeling pretty good. Wanted to keep the shoulders definitely uh, checked. Uh, don't want to go super heavy. I've been, you know, a 385 or so uh, on overhead press in the last training cycle, and I've definitely been well over 400 before. This is 298 for a set of three. Having to put the belt on just to keep my core braced because I'm starting to feel uh, my cramp, cramping in my back and things like that, and there's no reason to, to get crazy with it. So shut it down after three, and then just to get some extra blood flow on this last set, uh, it's just one plate on each side with the collars that gets to be uh, 146 just for a set of 10. But uh, wrap it up the week. I'm pretty happy with training. Uh, this is actually the recap is done after my bench day, literally a few hours after my bench day the following week. Uh, so very excited to bring that to you guys. But uh, yeah, stay tuned, man. This is this is getting good. I really like sharing these uh, these videos with you guys. So. All right, you guys. <laughs> So I'm pumped up. I am pumped up. Uh, my weight is, is, my body weight is right around 307. I woke up this morning uh, before this particular bench day and I was at 307 and I was like, oh my goodness, man, I'm heavier. Well, not heavier, but very close to being as heavy as I've ever been. And honestly, I'm kind of throwing out uh, all of the, uh, trying to stay super, super light because really I'm just wanting to put 700 up on the bar. Uh, and how it is, I want to definitely stay healthy, but I'm not going to be too worried about, because the all-time record is actually a notch higher now. So let's just go ahead and knock 700 out of the way, get that out, and let's move on to the next uh, next goal, which would be the all-time world record and maybe some full power records and things like that. Uh, so just to kind of put that out there, if you guys have been following me, y'all know what the full, t full power record is uh, and kind of what I'm wanting to go for on those numbers. But I'm pretty excited. As you can see, I'm keeping squats and deadlifts in the mix. Uh, I feel that keeping them in the five, 600 range for legs, uh, it allows me to still work those without losing too much. Uh, I mean, I took almost damn near a year off uh, on, my, on my legs and I was still able to come back and do 700 plus on almost both. Uh, actually, no, I did 700 plus on both uh, at the showdown meet. Uh, so I was able to squat 700. My bench, obviously I had an issue with the pec and uh, you know, didn't really compete at that level uh, for the showdown meet for bench. But I was able to deadlift uh, 722 and try to go for 800. Peck was just not having that. So that's really cool to know that at any given point in time, uh, even if I don't train legs directly, that I can come back and do pretty darn near elite total uh, as long as the bench is holding up. Uh, but for this particular cycle, I think we're just going to go ahead bench only. Uh, and so I'm keeping squats and deadlifts in for as long as I can, uh, as long as they're not actually affecting my bench. So if I'm, let's say, coming in on Monday doing my bench, which is my heaviest uh, lift for, you know, for now, obviously it's not heavier than my squat and deadlift numbers, but uh, my bench takes a lot out of me or more out of me when I'm benching 600 than if I'm squatting or deadlifting 600 because it's relative. Um, so if, as long as my bench numbers are not being affected, my energy levels are not being affected by my leg training, since I'm not worried about full power, then that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just keep the legs in it, uh, maybe playing around with some different, uh, you know, I'm doing maybe even some like sumo deadlifts. I know that's um, something that you guys have probably not seen me do a lot of, so I think I'm gonna start showing you some, just maybe some warm ups because I do warm ups with sumo deadlifts just to keep the hips open. Helps really on squat as well, so I can really open up the hips. Um, but keeping the squats with, and the dead, deadlifts without uh, a belt uh, and without straps, if I can, just because I don't want to be relying on straps, uh, I can definitely get some good work in, but I'm not looking to get a lot of work in. So that's why I'm not incorporating straps uh, or any kind of wraps and things like that for squats. Just trying to keep them in the mix, stay in shape. Uh, but back to my body weight, uh, I feel good. That's the biggest thing that I would definitely stress to you guys. Just because you gain body weight does not mean you gain strength. A lot of people have that misconception is just, I'm going to put on 30 pounds and all of a sudden I'm going to get stronger. If you put on 30 pounds of fat, that fat's not going to do anything. Even in a squat, I mean, if you put on 30 pounds of fat, you're going to be sluggish and you're going to be slow. You're not going to be stronger. What a lot of people do is they put on maybe 15 pounds of fat and 10 pounds of muscle and that extra 10 pounds with that fat might actually do some good for you. But we're not talking about body composition, things like that right now. I'm just kind of talking about what is working for me. 
Uh, you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, another shameless plug over there, um, you'll see kind of what I eat. That is actually not something that I eat on a daily basis. I typically eat a meal like that maybe three times a week. And the rest of the time, I don't want to say I eat like a bird because I definitely do not, but I definitely incorporate some salads and some things like that occasionally. I'm not a real big salad eater, but I typically do it when I feel like I haven't eaten enough greens. Uh, I do take green supplements and things like that to try to make sure that I'm getting those uh, fibrous sources uh, and green leafy vegetables uh, and not just slathering them with ranch dressing and things like that. So occasionally we'll go to like, you know, Italian restaurant and we do like all you can eat salad, soup and breadsticks, uh, which is a little more of a like lunch thing, but I definitely get those solid, uh, healthier nutri nutrition, uh, nu nutrient reach. Uh, Here we go. Nutrient rich foods in my diet. And, uh, you know, I get that. And then, of course, you see me eating the Mexican food meals and the sushi, which is not too bad. Uh, so it's definitely I want to stress to you guys more on uh, a little bit more of a detailed explanation here on YouTube because you guys follow me on Instagram. Maybe the short comments don't really do a lot of justice, uh, but I definitely think that's important. Uh, so enough about body composition and how I'm feeling. Training is going great. We have got some good numbers ahead of schedule here. Uh, and that's kind of why I did that little bump this last week. And I'm looking to maybe do an alternate week and a heavy week, a uh, heavy light week, where I'm basically going, let's say, 501 for a double one week. And then it would be like what my day one last week was, and you saw on the recap uh, overview, was 423, uh, 418. That was actually the light week on day one. The 520 uh, would have been the following week's heavy week. And this week is actually a little bit heavier than that. So it's kind of, we're mixing it up a little bit. We're having some fun. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically keep the alternating weeks going as soon, or get the alternating weeks going as soon as I start feeling like my energy levels are being depleted from doing a 600 pound bench one week. If I feel like I need to do a lighter week the next week, that's what it will do. But we only have about six heavy training days if we do uh, an alternating week light and heavy. So I'm still wanting to get maybe eight to 10 days of solid heavy days, but I don't want to be so taxed out that my joints are hurting and things like that. Cause training in the past, I've noticed that my elbows start to get a little tendonitis flaring in them. I've done a lot of things rehabbing and prehabbing uh, that have helped a lot, but it's inevitable that when I get up to the 650 you know, poundage for my body weight and my body style and my style of benching and the close grip and everything, that's kind of my vice is that my arms will tend to be uh, the one thing that doesn't heal up fast enough. And so leading up to the last meet, I learned that real quick, actually from previous training cycles. And so this time around, I've actually got a grip trainer that I'm going to be showing you guys here uh, next few weeks of how I'm using that. And it actually seems to be helping a lot. So we'll see how that transfers going forward. But on to the next thing of the video. I have got some Q and A's from you guys. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of questions on YouTube, so definitely if you have questions, drop them down in a comment or shoot me a DM on Instagram at SwimHack or shoot me an email. And you can do that with any question that you have. If it's a private question, you don't want me to share it, just let me know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, but definitely SwimHack at gmail.com is my email. But let me go ahead and jump into the questions. All of these are actually from Instagram. So the first one is from AOK180 from Instagram. And he asked, how many times a week do you bench? So for me, I bench typically once a week. Now I've been known to bench twice a week. I've even done it three times a week. But when I did it three times a week, it was early on when I was probably in the 315 to 500 pound range when I was in that, uh, when that was my strength level. My max bench was right at you know 300 to 500 in the few years that that was happening. And so I would bench on Mondays because Monday was always kind of the day that I would always do my bench. And then maybe on Wednesday, I would hit some shoulders and maybe even a lighter bench. So I never went heavy all three days or all you know two days of the week. I was always heavy one day, light one day. And then if I did a third day, it was doing dumbbells. And so it was definitely lighter. Uh, maybe on that particular sense, it was like 100 pound dumbbells. Uh, so maybe an example of my beginning stages of when I was lifting before powerlifting, uh, I was doing maybe, let's say, uh, 350 for a set of you know, three or so on bench. 
and then and that would be Monday. And then on Wednesday, I might do 225 for a burnout, like an AMRAP, because I was doing football and things like that. So that was one of the big things that I trained for. Uh, and then let's say I needed to get some more bench, or I just you know was bored, or whatever the case may be, because I wasn't really training for things that uh, anything specific. Uh, but I would do maybe like the 100 pound dumbbells for an AMRAP on the Friday or Saturday. I kind of restarted. Uh, I also went through a phase uh, where I would go uh, heavy, heavy bench on Monday. And then like on my shoulder day, I would also do maybe like, let's say I was working up to 500 on a Monday on, on that particular time frame. I would then come in on a Thursday or so and do shoulders. Uh, so the focus would be on shoulders, but then I'd also throw some lighter bench in there, maybe working up to 315 or 405 on that particular week. What I did find is that when I was starting with my coach, Josh, uh, he likes a lot of volume and a lot of athletes that he's worked with. And the first thing he kind of noticed is that I could handle a lot of volume early on. And so we would do heavy bench on Mondays. Then I would do like a lighter bench uh, later in the week. And as we got heavier, uh, it just took a lot out of me. I couldn't recover enough for the next Monday that I needed to bench again. So it pushed everything off or just messed everything up. So in the last, I would say four years or so, I've really been adamant about benching once a week and only benching once a week, especially when I start really, really, really getting heavy. And now that's relative for me. That's when I'm getting probably, you know, 90% or so of my max. And that's just, it takes a very big toll on me because it's not just 90% of my max, but it's 600 plus pounds. When I'm doing that on a Monday, it takes me seven days to recover and sometimes eight or nine, even 10 days, depending on how heavy we actually go. So lately I've been doing it one day a week. I got away with it this last week because, and I say this carefully because I know where I'm at and I know where I've been, but I was only in the 500. Now, mind you, each one of those reps, they look pretty easy, but they felt definitely felt heavy just because I haven't touched that kind of weight in a while. And it's bench. It's it just, it's heavy. 500 pounds is 500 pounds. I don't care who you are. Um, and when it goes, you know, when you get a little heavier, you can't do so many of those per week. You need to have that recovery time. So as of right now, it's once a week. And that's kind of what I'm sticking to because it works for me. But I know people and I train people. I actually coach people that bench twice a week and they do that just fine. And it's not a big deal. So find out what works for you. The biggest thing is recovery. So not to, you know, draw that question out too long but it's pretty complicated on how it how i would answer it but for most people your training really should be based on your goals what you're trying to do uh, i would say if you're bodybuilding or doing some more composition work and you're less of a strength athlete most most of the time you want to work on recovery you want to make sure that you're recovered properly because you're trying to get to that next level the next week and progress uh, to the heavier and heavier lifts as you go forward to try to get into meat prep and go into your meat uh, if you're working on like bodybuilding or you're just working just to feel a workout, go off a of feel hundred percent, but I think you can get away with a little more volume, a little more reps and not, and breaking down the muscle just a little bit more, but mind you, recovery is always important. So thank you for that question. Uh, next question is also from Instagram and it's from J Jord 4 underscore lifts. And he asks how to get a four plate bench from 365 natty so basically how do you get uh from 365 to 405 without steroids straight up so here's the thing if you guys have been following me for any length of time uh you probably know my story if you don't go back to some of my earliest videos on youtube you will see some of the craziest bro type lifts those are all natural no steroids no peds no trt none of that stuff um, it is definitely possible 100% uh, and I will fight somebody if they try to tell me it's not to get to at least 600 plus natural and that's what I did myself. I didn't get on TRT until I was 36 years old and that was after I had already benched 600 pounds. Uh, now my squat and deadlift numbers would have probably been higher had I trained them but I didn't really care about those until I was already 650 plus on bench. Um, but it is absolutely, uh, you're absolutely able to do that. Now, mind you, it's going to be harder for your smaller guys. So if you're a 135 pound guy, it's going to be a lot more uh, difficult for you to do than a 400 pound guy, but it's absolutely possible. Uh, and it's kind of a, basically how you train is going to determine how you're going to get to that next level. Uh, I like progressive overload. I like doing, you know, five or 10 pounds more a week, working in more of a pyramid 
uh, system where you start with you know your hypertrophy down at the bottom and you work up to your meat so let's say you start with 10 to 12 reps uh, or eight, eight to 10 reps or so for the first few weeks of training and it could last even more longer than that as long as you can go and then you strip off uh, the weight or I'm sorry you, you add weight and you strip off the reps as you go along so in there you want to definitely have some deloads I definitely recommend you have a deload once every few weeks maybe every four weeks or so is good for me some guys can go a little longer some a little long a uh, little less but the idea is to basically stack each week on top of the last one doing a little bit heavier so that your body gets acclimated slowly uh, it's kind of like an old um, story about a, a kid who grew up with a cow and it was a calf and he would carry the calf and as the calf got bigger and bigger and bigger so did the guy and so did the man you know he grew up into a man and he was able to carry a full-size cow now i don't know how realistic that is today but i'm sure we've had at least one person being able to carry a cow around on this planet in history uh, i would love to see it that'd be really cool because those things are freaking heavy but the idea is definitely there i don't know if how realistic that particular scenario would be but if you just slowly get better over time without injury and you get you know plenty of rest and recovery you're going to get stronger so using that method i think you're going to be just fine getting from a 365 to a 405 uh, shameless plug for my bench programs or my full power programs benchonly.com i've helped over 1500 people i think we're we're well into the 1500s now that have purchased one of my programs and have gotten me some great feedback uh, so those programs build on one another uh, obviously um, people have used the 1.0 gave me great feedback then i built a 2.0 program got a lot of great feedback and it came out with a 3.0 program so that's the only difference is it's not one is better than the other necessarily the 2.0 2 and 3.0 are better than the 1.0 because that's like my first you know trial at building programs for people but from that point on they just got better and better and better and i really really stand behind my program so if you guys are looking for a program that will help you to follow something i definitely recommend getting on some program even if it's not mine uh, check it out benchonly.com links in the description but um, you know that is it for the questions for this week and that's pretty much it for the recap uh, i really appreciate you guys tuning in uh, i'm trying to do my best keeping a weekly recap going for you guys um, so i'm going to be filming the lifts a little bit more i think what i'm going to try to do this next week uh, and i did it today was I actually filmed each of the lifts that i do so i can kind of explain why i'm doing those lifts and how they're going to contribute uh, to uh, other than squat deadlift uh, how they're going to actually contribute to this particular meat prep so you guys can kind of learn a little bit more in depth of why i do what i do not just do what i do because it makes you better because what i'm doing may not apply to you at your particular point in training because you may not have that particular weakness that i have at this point in my training that's the difference between copying somebody else's uh, system and trying to make it your own you can do pretty good but when you start getting into roadblocks that's where the difference is like coaching really comes into play is because they can see what you're doing analyze you know different things about your lifestyle what you're eating how you're training how you're resting and they can really uh, direct you in the right way so but if you're looking for a coach i do have spots uh, very few and they come up and they go away pretty quick uh, i'd be more than happy to at least talk to you about it uh, I can't promise anything because obviously we got to have a good fit. I've got to know that you're a hard worker. I've got to have the time. So when you're seeing this video, I may or may not have a spot, but feel free to reach out on the website, benchonly.com. Be happy to help you out. And once again, if you're on Instagram, definitely check me out over there. Give me a follow. Uh, subscribe to this uh, video, to this channel. If you like it, uh, definitely uh, thumbs up for me. Share it with your friends and uh, I will see you guys next week because it is definitely getting excited peace